Hello, my name is Albert Gurrier, and welcome to another installment of Slam and Synapsis. Yes, this is another edition. Um, second one in two days. I have a lot of catching up to do since it's been about a year or so since I've done this with any regular, regular scheduling. So, here it goes. A uh, guy that I know on Facebook, one of my friends on Facebook, his name is Danny Rodriguez. He is one of the owners and runners of a site called www.superfriendsuniverse.com. And one day I was asking for suggestions as to what I would do on one of my segments. And he suggested at that, since at that particular time I was doing comic book covers on my Facebook page, he said, hey, why don't you talk about some storylines? Some issues with stuff, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> and I said, you know, might give it some thought. I mean, my segments are mostly wrestling. I didn't see how that would fit in. But as I would tell most people, um, my segments are 90% wrestling, about 10% everything else. So I figured, you know, make room for that 10% for everything else. Now, in the future, I may go into storylines and such, but... I'm going to give you a little bit of history of myself when it comes to comic books. Um, I haven't collected them in about ooh, 15 years or so. But a lot of the knowledge that I have comes from the, from the 70s on up. Plus, prior to that, of course, with the origin stories and all that. Um, going into places like Barnes & Noble and Books a Million, places of that nature, I, I just salivate. I just salivate when I get to the graphic novel section because they didn't have such things back when I was growing up. You go to the library, you go to the section of order comic books, and really wouldn't have that much of it. And usually when they did, it was like like the kitty style things like Betty, well not kitty style things, but they would have things like Betty Boop or Superman for obvious reasons because he was that iconic character, but you never really saw much else. So yeah, to put me in a bookstore with lots of graphic novels and a library with lots of graphic novels, I'll just sit there and look at the section for days. <laughs> because I'm because I'm just remembering the stuff that I read growing up. And another thing that's always interesting is going to the movies. Nowadays Marvel's had this big influx of movies with Iron Man and Spider-Man and Hulk and things of that nature and it's always fun whenever you go watch these movies with someone else because typically if it's something that they haven't seen before conversations will start with the phrase in the book this is what happened and you go and <laughs> some people are open to it some people are okay I'll just listen to you for the sake of entertaining you but, you know, it's just interesting that you'll have conversations where it's like, oh, like in Iron Man, in this in the book, basically it was kind of the same way. It's like with shrapnel, all those taken like in Vietnam at the time, as opposed to modern day. And it's kind of along the same line with the way the heart is, keeping the shrapnel away from the... the, the Transistors to keeping the shrapnel away from his heart to keep him alive that much longer. You look at like Spider-Man. It's like in the books it wasn't he was bit wasn't like a scientific thing. There was just this misfortunate situation where the spider crossed this radioactive ray at the wrong point and then bit Spider, then bit Peter Parker, transferring all his po all his powers over, over to him. Is is is. If you get someone that's into comic books or just starting into it or has a brief somewhat interest in it, it makes for interesting conversations because then you could like teach them, you could open their mind to different possibilities that maybe they would want to read the books later and look back at the history of the character and be absorbed in that in that comic book spirit that you have yourself. Like I said, it's been about 15 years since since I've ever collected them, but you put, like I said, you put me in a graphic novel section and yeah, I'm going to be going crazy in it because I'm remembering the books that I bought and purchased, well, bought and purchased the same thing, um, perused, I should say, <laughs> while I was a kid. 
Um, pretty much stopped getting, stopped collecting them because I moved and there wasn't any place out where I was at that I could really trust yet because it's kind of new. And where I'm at now, there's really not that many places I could have gone to for them. I mean, there was like places in there, but at the time I was trying to get life resituated here. So, didn't really seek out and kind of lost interest in the new style. I've heard since then um, DC started their new 52 series and Marvel has pretty much redone their whole thing. I still can't grasp my mind around Red Hulk and Red She-Hulk and, and Purple Hulk and Yellow Hulk and, and Rainbow Hulk and <laughs> Fuchsia Hulk and, and all this other kind of stuff that they have rebooted and remade and recharacterized. So, odds are, I may, like, look at them just out of curiosity, but my heart goes to old school. My heart always goes to old school, more than anything. Because that's what I grew up on, and that's what I've come to appreciate. In my days, I've picked up things like, like, Origins of Marvel Comics, Son of Origins of Marvel Comics, tried my best through sources to pick up the heavy books. Um, I... Try my best to find the Treasury editions. They were these big, oversized comic books that they tend to put out like once a year or so. There are special editions like Batman and the Hulk or Superman versus Spider Man or things of that nature. I mean, back then, comic books were more along the lines of the story as opposed to the to the gimmicks. Now, as I got into my later years of comic books there were the gimmicks of the special covers or the or the glitter on the issue or the interlocking books to make a poster I mean granted Marvel had a thing called a series of the Marvel Universe that dealt with the characters that they had that with the covers if you put them just right it comprises this big like mural poster but for the most part it's like the issues that I grew up on, they didn't rely on any gimmicks to get them over because it was the storyline and the artwork that did it more than anything. Nowadays, like I said, you'll see all these number one issues with all these different covers that have the same story in them. And you think that, and you think to yourself, you know, this might be a different thing or this might be a different book. Then you get them home, you open it up, it's like, oh, it's the same story. Why did I get two or three of these? Oh, well, of course. As I got older, comic book shops became a little bit obvious between, became more noticeable the fact that there were collectors out there. So usually they would put theirs like in special plastic that it's like you really couldn't open without destroying the book in the process. And most comic book manufacturers also wrap their books in plastic, in special plastic covers that you really didn't know what the story was until you actually open up the pack. It's just interesting to see how far comic books have come. I mean, storylines got a bit deeper. They dealt with issues that were going on at the particular time. As a matter of fact, the matter of fact, Marvel kind of broke what's known as the comic codes. There was a comic seal that got put in books to show that it was that it was accepted by the by the governing board, kind of like the ratings with video games nowadays. It it met criteria where it was safe for everyone but then like I said Marvel got into stories where they didn't get that code and back then the code was 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 a definite like better homes and gardens recommendation but they started getting into deeper stories like drug abuse and just deeper issues that really really weren't kid friendly really weren't really weren't your everyday story but with stories that needed to be tackled anyway. So. And there's there's so many things that I could go into, and I think as future goes, I think I may start talking about comic book storylines in the future on these segments, and probably expand on my 10% to 15 or 20. So, just stay tuned. And... Guess that's about it. 
If you want to drop me a comment, you could always do so either on YouTube or on my Facebook page at Slam and Synapsis. You could also email me at agurriatyahoo.com. I'm more than happy to take any suggestions for segments that you may want me to do here or discuss if you have any comic books that you want me to go into or discuss, by all means, do so as well. Or if there's anything else, if it's TV, movies, things of that nature, I'm definitely open for all types of suggestions so that I can keep doing these on a regular basis again, as opposed to going years <laughs> between them. So, for Robert Gurry, this is Slam and Synapsis, saying, hope your ink continues to flow, hope your stories continue to grow, and hope your issues continue to prosper. So, see you guys later. Good night. And goodbye, everybody.